Hi, I'm Rachel Bowman. Hi, I'm Jason Bowman. And, and we're, we're the, the Bowmans. So why don't you tell us a little bit about <clears throat> your story, a little bit about how you came into this world and because it wasn't the average circumstances. That is true. So I was born in the Philippines. My mother was very, very poor. So she was living in a cardboard box in an alleyway and started to go into labor. And as she was having me, she was hemorrhaging really bad. There was a lot of commotion. And so some people that were passing by, which happened to be missionaries, <clears throat> came to help her. And they took my mother to the hospital, and then they took me to an orphanage where a student from BYU apparently took care of me for the couple of weeks that my mom was in the hospital. So if you're the student from BYU, thank you, because it's pretty awesome. Wouldn't <laughs> be here. And then <clears throat> a couple of weeks later, after I had gotten better, and my mom was well enough, she came back to get me. But when she took me home, she couldn't take care of me. She realized that she couldn't feed me and that she couldn't uh, feed herself, really. So all of these things, so she went back to the orphanage and just said, hey, I have this baby, you guys help me. And I was just seeing if there was the possibility that you might want to have someone that might want to adopt her. Meanwhile, your mom. <clears throat> yeah, so my mom, a few months before this, or my, my adoptive mother had her two sons and then had had a miscarriage and she told me that she was washing the dishes and that when she was washing the dishes she was praying and was asking the Lord you know for Christmas I would really like a little girl and so lo and behold November comes along they're in the Philippines <clears throat> everyone knew about this couple this family that they were looking for a little girl they wanted to adopt a little girl so they came and they told them and my mom my dad was like, let's go. My adoptive parents, said, let's go. Let's go see this baby at the orphanage. And my mom was like, I'm not going. <laughs> she was so afraid that she was going to get there and something wasn't going to work out. Or maybe she didn't feel like, I don't know. She just didn't want to open herself up to be vulnerable in that way. So she told my dad, she said, you, you go and you see about the baby, but I'll stay here and come back and tell me. So my dad went to the orphanage and he met me. And then he came back to my mom and he told her, I found our daughter. So that is the way the story goes. You know, I don't remember a whole lot about the Philippines. I was very young. I think I was there from maybe off and on for the first three, four years of my life. And then when we came back to the United States, we, we live here in a very small town, even smaller than this town that I live in now. Everybody always says, you know, we have like one stoplight and in the town that I grew up, there, there wasn't a stoplight. So uh, there was maybe a post office with like 10 boxes, very small, but... Literally the road is called like 80 foot road or something. <laughs> that's, it is called 80 foot road, but not because it's 80 feet long. I'm pretty sure that's why it was Super named Super rude, okay? Um, but not a very big town. And so growing up was just... I, had, I was surrounded by a lot of people that loved me, but they also, I didn't look anything like anyone in my family. So were there some benefits to being, you know, the, uh, the adopted child in the family or? So I think one of the benefits from it was my mom used to have this adoption plaque. It was like a poem that hung up in my room for as long as I can remember. I wish I would, I still had it, but it says, it basically said, you didn't grow under my heart, but in it. And hmm. I just had this really profound understanding, which I think had to have been supernatural, that I was chosen, you know, that they walked into an orphanage and they, they chose me. Mm -hmm. They were missionaries and I just grew up in the church. You know, and even though my dad is not, not my biological father, he loves to say, you know, that I got all of my ministerial gifts from him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, you probably learned I a probably lot. I probably did from, learn yeah. a lot from my dad. My dad <laughs> is a fantastic preacher. 
he uh, frequently sings, I, I'll fly away, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because we're from the South, okay? We should talk a little bit about maybe, um, like maybe the heart or the core of, of the wounds that come with being an adopted person. Yeah. Um, I was an orphan. You know, there was a moment that, not because my mother didn't want to, but that there was a moment that she couldn't care for me, so that she had to give me away. And the other day, it's so funny, we were sitting out by the pool, and it's so, your kids always hear things that you don't think that they hear. And I guess Jeremiah had heard that about me being adopted and whatnot, of course. And so he walks up to me at the pool and he says, why didn't your mom want you? And I was not ready. <laughs> And I said, what? What did you say? He goes, why didn't your mom want you? I said, why, why were you adopted? And I told him, I said, my mom wanted me, but she didn't have the ability to take care of me. And I said, and I was lucky enough to have these people that did want me and that have taken care of me. Now that didn't mean that I came over here and it was all sunshine and unicorns after that, because right. we've gone through some things. And you know, my parents, my adoptive parents have gotten divorced. They've been remarried. My mom and my stepfather have both passed away. And so there's been some, some struggles and hardship during that of all trying to get to know each other in these relationships. When we first started dating, one of the things that, that is one of the worst things about my family, sorry guys, love you, <laughs> is that we don't talk about things. So. If someone's dealing with something, a lot of times you find out about it later, or it's kind of like a hush-hush thing, and no one, everybody acts like everything's fine. <laughs> because they were just, you don't, people don't want to be vulnerable with one another. I'm sure that's a theme in a lot of families. And so, kind of grew up joking about things, or using sarcasm as a means of trying to communicate pain. And one of the first times that I needed to tell Jason something, that was difficult was when my mom was, we had just started dating. My mom was dealing with her final kidney transplant shutting down. And, and I was a broken shell of a person. I was thinking to myself, this is, this is definitely what's going to kill her. And I don't want to introduce this dynamic to Jason because I just thought that if he saw this, then he would inevitably see me as an orphan, you know? I think I thought to myself that maybe you would see me as my mom is sick. Well, I don't want to go date this girl whose mom is sick. I'm going to have to deal with all that. But I think just now, because I've never said that to you yeah, before. Yeah, you have not said that to me. <laughs> that I think that I knew like one day my mom was going to die and that you would see me as an orphan. So, <laughs> and, and I remember when I walked in to tell you because uh, it was after college, so like all my friends had moved away, really, and I knew that I needed, I wanted someone to drive with me to go and see her, and I wanted that person to be you. And I went to his room at his parents' house, and I said, "I need to tell you something. Go ahead and tell everyone what I made you do." <laughs> she made me turn around, <laughs> which was super weird. So sorry. Like, okay. <laughs> So I said, can you turn around? And he's like, why? <laughs> I said, because I can't tell you hard things with you looking at me. I need to turn around. Yeah. And uh, so he turned around and I told him, you know, my mom is really sick and, you know, all these things. And, and he just turned around and he helped me while I cried. And I, I still remember the most, the time when I thought to myself, I'm going to marry this guy. <laughs> was when we were driving back from seeing her and I knew that that would be the thing that would kill her. I knew that that was, that this was a battle that, that she had been facing for so long and that that would be the battle that would inevitably end with, with her leaving this world. And it's been four years since she passed away. Really wish I could talk to her about the babies. Man, she would love those babies though, I'll oh, tell you man. that. Oh man. You were Protestant and I was Catholic. <laughs> And uh, it was a big deal to me because I had just gone through everything I went through. Flashbacks, you can see the previous video for that. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, you, you know, 
I mean, there's quite a bit of differences between, you know, the way that we approach faith and um, Christ and things. So, and I was starting to know that. Um, and so then you became Catholic. True story. Yeah, I mean, I, I had never really grown up in like an anti-Catholic home. I, the only thing I learned about Catholicism was from the Boondock Saints. <laughs> Uh, that is not. That's not. You're not. No. Like that. Okay. <laughs> Thought I'd ask. <laughs> but, but I hadn't. I just hadn't. Or what's that other movie? Constantine. That was the other movie. Now that. that. I, <laughs> I could go for that. That's this is the cool. only movies that I learned about Catholicism in. And I just didn't know a lot about it. So when we were dating. You still, even though you had had this conversion of heart, you weren't like shouting from the rooftops no, about your faith. No. You weren't like trying to evangelize me. Um, I was trying to figure out what happened to, to me. You were trying to bless me when we first met yeah. or anything. <laughs> but, but I knew that something was different about Jason and his family. Mm -hmm. uh, because shortly after we started dating, his he went out of town to go to PA school and I was here. I was working, living here in town, and I would still go over and hang out with his mom and dad. Because <laughs> your sister didn't even live at home, right? Uh, at I that don't point, think so. no, no, I don't think she no, did. No, so it was just your mom and dad. So it was a really weird girlfriend that would just hang out at your parents' house. <laughs> he would call me and be like, where are you at? I'm like, I'm at your, hang out with your mom and dad. <laughs> I mean, everybody loved my mom and dad growing up, so I'm, I'm kind of used to that. <laughs> like, Jason, you're great, but your mom and dad. <laughs> Long story short, your family just loved me so incredibly well. Hmm. You know, I walked in and they immediately made me feel like it was okay for me to be me. I didn't have to prove anything. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have, they, I didn't think that they were gonna hold it over my head later. <laughs> they, they just loved me freely. It's awesome. I mean, that's, that, that says a lot about evangelization right there. Yeah, and, you know, you don't necessarily lead with, you know, all the different things, that truths and stuff that were different about what we had understood about, um, you know, our different faiths, but rather just leading with beauty, with love. Yeah, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yeah. I consider you one of the greatest things that I've ever been a part of. And you just have a lot of natural gifts. Um, you can sing, you can write. Um, you speak very well. I think your speaking is probably the best, um, one of the best gifts that, that God's given you. And, um, and so a big part of my journey was just, I think, to be there to love you into the Catholic faith. I've learned way more from you than you have from me, that's for sure. <laughs> you, you, all I had to do was just love you well, which was easy. <laughs> um, you're very vivacious and, and uh, bold with your talents. Do you think that, to tie it back to you know the adoption thing, do you feel like that's related or no? Actually, a couple of years ago, I was asked to give a talk uh, at the University of Florida, and they wanted me to talk on like what it was like to be a beloved daughter or something like that. Um, and, and that's a common theme <laughs> that, that, you know, you want to talk to young women about. And I remember praying about it. And I knew that the thing that I really wanted to share with them was this, this whole, the, the teaching of Imago Dei, of being the image and likeness of Christ. And I remember when I was praying about it, being adopted, I know that I am in the image of my adopted parents because I've grown in likeness of them by relationship with them. Like I probably do have a lot of my dad's spiritual gifts just because I have a relationship with him. I have some of my mom's mannerisms. I say things that my mom said because of my relationship with her. So it was this knowledge of the fact that, wow, like I am just innately an image and I grow in likeness by relationship. And then that dawned on me that it's the same thing for my relationship with God. And I think that that's what gives me the confidence to do that. Well, this has been my favorite episode by <laughs> far, because I love this lady right here. So um, Sorry if I've been all snotty the whole episode. <laughs>
No, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us again and to be a part of our lives. Um, I know that this is important to me. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I, I know that there's so much treasure in, in our experience together and in your heart and everything you've been through uh, in your life that can benefit so many people. So I really hope that that helped anyone watching this. And um, yeah, so please come back next time. And uh, we're, we're praying for you, really intentionally praying for you. We ask pray that you us. really do pray for us. <laughs> please. <laughs> and uh, God bless you guys. God bless.